We know you have questions. We know you want answers. A 16-year-old murdered in the East Valley, a gang in Gilbert. What you need to know about where the Preston Lord case stands and who are the Gilbert goons. It's all right now on MomCast. Welcome everyone to MomCast. I'm your host, Emma Jade. It's been almost three months since 16-year-old Preston Lord was brutally murdered outside of a house party in Queen Creek. Since then, details and rumors about an alleged gang of teens who do this, who beat up other teens in the East Valley. Story after story have started pouring in. So who are the Gilbert goons? Are they responsible for Preston Lord's death? Why haven't they all been arrested? And are my kids, are my teens, are they safe? Arizona Republic reporter Robert Anglin has been covering every angle of this story. Take me back, October 28th, what happened to Preston Lord? Preston Lord is a 16-year-old kid who went to a Halloween party on October 28th, and he never came home. He was fatally beaten at that party, and he died two days later. M most accounts say that there was some kind of fight, that Preston Lord was a target, and that he wasn't just beaten up by one kid but a but a but a gang of kids and that's that's what happened on October 28th they left his body lying in the street and police were called to the scene once for the party which was in a, a kind of a, a it was in a neighborhood of ranch homes um uh, wealthy wealthy ranch homes sprawling it's, it's a very nice neighborhood very quiet very dark but on this night there were hundreds of kids in the streets pouring over, walking through lawns. You know, if you talk to neighbors there and see the videotape, it was so packed with cars, you couldn't get to your own home if you lived in the neighborhood. And in the midst of all of this, police showed up in Queen Creek. Police were called about a disturbance. They got there. The party was in what neighbors say was full swing. They did nothing to shut down the party. They left because they received a priority call. I believe they referred to it as a domestic violence call. And an hour later, this fight broke out and Preston Lord died or was beaten under, into unconsciousness on the street. And police came back and found his body in this in the street. Um, several people at the party apparently tried to perform CPR. They, they lifted his body. I've seen some video um, of the attack and, or the aftermath of the attack. They tried to perform CPR and they couldn't revive him. He was, of course, taken to the hospital and and then transferred and died two days later. Do we have a reason? People keep asking, why Preston? Well, well, well we, we don't know the answer to that. If there was a motive involved, we haven't heard it yet. But what I've been able to learn in the last month, I, I got involved in this really on Thanksgiving Day or the day before Thanksgiving. Um, I was asked to look into the Preston Lord case and I became immediately aware of a series of attacks that had gone on for about a year um, in Gilbert, in Mesa, in um, Santan Valley, um, of attacks by a group of kids calling themselves the Gilbert Goons. And part of their uh, fun, their Friday night fun, was to go target random strangers, random kids, and and attack them in gang form. I, I, I call them blitz-style attacks. They're quick. They involve multiple attackers. They knock people to the ground. They use brass knuckles, feet. Um, stomping is a big part of this. And, and in the context of that, the community, mothers in the community have, have said that, and parents and students have told us that this is why Preston Lord died. This group of Gilbert goons attacked Preston Lord in the same manner that they had attacked others. And it had gone unchecked for a year. When did you start to piece some of this together? When did this story of the Gilbert goons really start to come to fruition? So there was a lot of community outrage over the death of Preston Lord. There was a sense among community members that police weren't acting fast enough in the investigation of Preston Lord. And they were not me, but they were piecing together a lot of disparate information about about this gang that attacked people. They were throwing names out. So part of what I did was I entered the, again. I, I got involved in this on, uh, really on 
the day before Thanksgiving, I spent that day and the and Thanksgiving afternoon in this community talking to people where police had conducted searches. But what I took that information and we were able to frame the issue around the Gilbert goons. So they believe that the Gilbert goons are responsible for killing Preston Lord. And I've been able to show and my colleague, Elena Santa Cruz, who's worked with me in lockstep on this, have been able to document multiple attacks that have gone, again, unchecked for more than a year. And by unchecked, I mean unchecked by police, um, primarily Gilbert police. That's where, what we've called the nexus of these attacks was in Gilbert. Who are the Gilbert goons? Who are they? How many people are involved here? We don't know the, the extent of the Gilbert goons. We know that there are I think I've uh, more up to 20, maybe more kids. They come from different high schools. Many of them are affluent. The, they are predominantly white and they act individually and they act in a group by individual. I mean, some multiple people are filmed in different videos. So we, I was able to identify the same people in different attack videos Again, going back to November, December 22, mostly December 22. And these attacks, they took place in parks. They took place at house parties. They took place at fast food restaurants. in and out was the scene. The in and out in Gilbert at Williamsfield and Santana Valley Parkway was the scene of multiple attacks in, in a fairly short span of time. But it extended out into the next year, into 2023. And nothing was happening now. I say nothing. I mean that these attacks, police, Gilbert police in particular, weren't connecting these attacks to one another. And why not? You would think that that would kind of start to make sense if you start to see a pattern like this. What were they missing? Well, all you can do is rely on what the police chief said about that those attacks. Now, here's the police chief said that they couldn't put the attacks together because the victims didn't name the Gilbert goons as their attackers. What that would require a normal crime victim to do, though, if you think about it, if you extrapolate out, that would require a normal crime victim to know the identity of their attacker the moment they're attacked or, or there, there's this fait accompli, we can't investigate it, we're sorry. That's, that's the effect of what the police chief said. Now, Gilbert police, it gets worse. Gilbert police actually arrested one individual in two group attacks in December of 22. One attack occurred at an in and out One attack occurred at a house party. They were two different teenagers who were attacked. The attacker was a, a juvenile. He used brass knuckles. In, both, in one of the cases, one of the kids had to have his head stapled back together. Um, the other suffered significant injuries as well. Um, I've seen videos of both attacks. In those cases, police targeted a single individual. And even though he acknowledged and police officers in their reports acknowledged that this was part of a group activity, that there was a gang, they didn't use the word gang, but there were ki other kids involved in these, these two attacks. They prosecuted one individual for two different crimes. And, and that was the end of it. In the interviews with police, this individual, the juvenile, is when he he's the one who said I like to I go out with my friends and or, or I, I enjoy attacking individual strangers randomly that's what we do um and then if you look at the videos you can see that the people involved in those attacks were involved in others and and I don't to this day Emma I can't tell you how many actual attacks there were because we keep seeing new ones and they're 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 relentless I've I've had a lot of self defense training in my in my day, and I can tell you that if I were up against as quickly and as fast and as violent as these kids are, I wouldn't stand a chance. The people a part of this gang, the Gilbert Goons, will do an attack. They'll video it, and will they post it to Snapchat? Where are they? Where are all these videos living? Pick your social media poison: mm -hmm. Snapchat, Instagram. Um, private messages. They they share them amongst themselves. We found we've had videos coming to us from multiple sources. We found some ourselves on social media. Um, in the in the aftermath of Preston Lord's murder, 
these videos are disappearing off social media, but we've collected plenty and they keep arriving. Um, in fact, I got two new ones yesterday. It's hard for people to grasp that this is like an organized group gang, that these young kids, these these kids who seemingly come from good families, that this is happening in our community and that we, we've missed it for a whole year plus. But they weren't being missed. The victims knew they were being attacked. Some didn't report, some did. Um, I can't I can't explain Gilbert's Gilbert Police Department's inaction on these cases. Since we've reported it, they've announced that they've reopened or opened nine cases. So they they are now fully aware and committed to investigating these attacks. Um, but but the response has been awkward at best, unexplainable at best. I, that's where we're at. Which leads to my next question. The community is frustrated. So far, it's all that I hear. I mean, at the hairdresser, at the grocery store, wherever I'm at, people want to know why have there not been arrests? You think about this day and age where there's video, you can get video sent to you faster than ever. You can get information sent to you faster than ever. What's the holdup? What's going on? I think there's, I think you have to separate things. I think, um, I do believe there, um, I know there is video of the Preston Lord attack and I, I'm certain that police have that video. Um, I think you have to separate the murder case from the random attacks or the attacks. Yeah. Um, Queen Creek had never had a murder. This is its first homicide investigation of the new department. The, mm -hmm. the department is brand new. It was um, established a year ago, a, a little more than a year ago now. And this was their first homicide investigation. So I, I think they're being deliberate in that investigation. I, I'm, I am in no position to assess the status of their case. They have, in fact, um, referred seven individuals for criminal charges um, two months to the day of Preston Lord's murder, they made that announcement. They haven't named the individuals. They, there are um, minors and adults involved, seven people total, multiple charges. And they've asked the county attorney's office to review their cases for charges in what's called a referral or a submittal. The county attorney is going to review it, determine if no more work needs to be done to pursue specific charges. And then the I, I imagine that there will be some formal announcement of that in the coming weeks. Meanwhile, Gilbert police. You go back to these attack videos and I'm going to concentrate on one from um, November of uh, or December of 2022 an in and out attack. We published the video on December 14th because that's when our initial investigation published on December 14th, and we laid out the whole, the kind of, the scheme. We, de Elena and I detailed it. We had interviews with victims, the parents of victims. We laid out the attacks as they occurred. So on that day, you could start a stopwatch. Gilbert police didn't make any arrests in that case and haven't. Now, contrast that with Mesa Police Department, for example. Two weeks ago, Mesa Police Department was provided a video of an attack at a park. The victim never came forward until this month. Within two weeks of that victim, less than two weeks of that victim and his family coming forward, an individual who appears in the December 22nd video was arrested by Mesa Police for the attack in, in the Mesa Park. So Mesa Police were able to make a case off a of video and, and a witness statement in two weeks. Again, we published video of an attack in Gilbert in December, and we have yet to see any individuals arrested in that particular attack. Now, the individual that Mesa arrested is an individual that has been named in, um, in the Preston Lord case. His home was searched, and I have videos of him engaged in two other yet two other attacks a lot of people are looking at this case and they're saying the reason why there's no arrest is because these parents are they have money they have money and they're somehow connected and this is so frustrating i agree i hear the same complaints it's hard to assess whether somebody's influence is playing a, a role in the case certainly 
parents of wealth have the availability and access to lawyers that that teens in other communities might not have, um, to put it mildly. And, and certainly the police have indicated that parents have prevented, Queen Creek police have, have indicated there that some parents involved in these cases who have information about what happened to Preston Lord have prevented their children from talking to police and interviewing with officers. Queen Creek police, as you mentioned, has submitted seven individuals to the Maricopa County attorney. We know that there are just a mountain of evidence but how much longer do we have to wait? What are you, What is happening right now in the process? We're waiting for the county attorney to review the cases and determine whether Queen Creek Police needs to go back and do more work for each individual charge that they want to make. Um, a homicide investigator, look, I've spent 30 plus years investigating crimes, writing about them. And a homicide investigation is a living organic thing. It can take minutes, it can take months, it can take years. There's no statute of limitations on, on murder. So a, a potential perpetrator could be arrested 20 or 30 years from now. And I've seen that happen too. Um, I think we are in the early stages of what has been described to me as a fairly rigorous investigation. A 16 year old kid from a suburb goes to a Halloween party and dies. It's, and then, it's there are hundreds and hundreds of people at the scene of this party. I can tell you that in videos I have seen, every one of the kids had a camera. There were people filming this attack. It's it's almost indisputable. And then you find out that for a year prior to this, attack after attack after attack after attack was occurring and being allowed to go unchecked in the area surrounding Queen Creek. Now, to the best of my knowledge, right now, as we're talking, I don't have a video in Queen Creek. I have some from Santan Valley. I have them from Gilbert. I have them from Mesa. So so in the area directly around, in fact, that the Santan Valley video is Santan Mountain Regional Park. It's Pinal County Sheriff's Territory. They've made two arrests. And that video was shot, believe it or not, um, two weeks after Preston Lord was, was murdered. So in the aftermath of Preston Lord, I, and look, I'm embarrassed by this. I actually was talking to victims and I was saying, look, whatever happened in the past, there, the potential, the idea that they would continue attacking after a boy was killed, if in fact, they, whether or not they were involved in it or not, if they, nobody is going to keep beating up kids after a murder of a kid, it would be crazy because you're going to bring attention to yourself. Well, it shows you how smart I am because two weeks after Preston Lord died, they were at Sandtown Mountain Regional Park, an area named near called Wagon Wheel, where they surrounded a kid, beat him onto the ground, and um, November eighteenth, and and they they did their number. They were screaming obscenities at him. There was it was like a party atmosphere around the beating of a sixteen year old kid from Castile High School, which in mileage terms is probably within five miles, four miles of where Preston Lord was killed it just happened to be a different jurisdiction so that's that's the the reality of what we're facing here what can people expect once these charges come back once the maricopa county attorney are done with their investigation what are the next steps because people are, are just want justice so what's next in the process that that people watching this can hang on to well first of all Again, we, there's two separate issues going on. Well, more than that now, each attack in and of itself is a is a potential crime, right? You you can see it. It's not like your eyes are lying to you. You see somebody beating the snot out of a, of a kid. That's a crime. So each one of the, and, and if there's five people or four people or seven people in each of those videos, those seven people have committed a crime. So there's those crimes and there could be a lot of them. And then there's the murder of Preston Lord, where so far police have said, have, have indicated they want to charge seven people in the murder. So what happens next is they announce formal charges against those seven people. They announce whether or not they're going to be charged. For instance, are they going to be charged as an adult? What are the what is the actual charge? Is it manslaughter? Is it a, is it a murder charge? Um, uh, you know, 
what were the circumstances surrounding that attack? And I have to assume and believe that police know exactly why Preston Lord was targeted, what the issue was. And, and then we're going to find that out as the charges come forward. And then, of course, there'll be an arraignment and initial appearance. There will be um, defense lawyers involved and for sure. And, and the case will play out in court. Uh, you know how long I, I like to say that justice moves at the speed of glaciers. So in a year or two from we'll probably still be talking about this case. Have you spoken to any parents of people who have been arrested? The answer is yes. The Arizona Republic has not named any minors or juveniles. In fact, we haven't named anybody in the case uh, unless they were an adult who's arrested. So we had until arrests started taking place last week. God, is it really just a week ago? That was the first time there had been any arrests in these attack videos other than the ones that Gilbert police did as one offs. But the first time that any arrests were made in connection to the Gilbert goons as a group started occurring last week. Two weeks prior to that, one of the mothers of one of the self-proclaimed Gilbert goons called the Arizona Republic and was frankly ranting about how we'd done her son wrong and that she she was very, very angry. So I called her back and she had several concerns. One is that by she believed we had put out his name in public and she believed that the paper had wronged him and i i had to ask her i said you're threatening the arizona republic and me because you believe we've published somebody's name i said did, did you know that we haven't printed a single name at that point and and she said no i said well did you read the stories before you called and she said no um and then she wanted to convince me and was very passionate about saying that, that her son had nothing to do with the murder of Preston Lord, that he wasn't there, that he was out of town. And I told her, I said, I, I believe you. Um, I believe that there's nothing in my investigation that shows that your son was involved in that case, despite the social media outrage. And, and there's been a lot of misinformation spread on social media about who the attackers are, about naming kids. And, and some of it's really, really awful. Um, but I, I told her, I, there's nothing that I've found that suggests your child was involved in, in the murder of Preston Lord. But I said, but I do have these videos of your son attacking other kids. Can we talk about that? And she became extremely angry. And she, she said to me very cryptically, the truth will come out. And then I, I said, well, can we talk about these videos? And she said, we have no guilt, she shouted at me. We have no guilt. And then she hung up. So that's one interview. And another interview I had with one of the moms of, of a child, uh, a juvenile who was arrested last week. I spoke with her. She was extremely polite. She didn't want to talk to the case. But I went ahead and, and asked her a series of questions about her son's involvement. Um, and I included... Not and we we of course published this, but I, I included in in text to her. I said, "Look, I understand you don't want to talk to me, but in that conversation, she said she was unaware of her son being filmed in any attack video or any photographs. So I sent her photographs, which by the way, I I believed at the time she had already seen. Mm -hmm. I sent her photographs, one of a photograph of her son holding a gun, posing with a couple other kids. I sent her." I multiple attack videos in which her son was clearly visible and and I got no response. So this is a this is a juvenile who's now been held without bail by the judge um and and it has and the prosecuting attorney um, um indicated that he was involved in other violent attacks in the, in the court hearing and acknowledged that uh, or at least asserted that he was part of the Gilbert Coons. Um, the other thing that's happening at this time is, too, that the some of the police departments are struggling with and trying to find a clear path forward to calling the Kilbert goons or trying to find an answer as to whether they can call, classify legally the Gilbert goons as a criminal street gang. Mm -hmm. And we the county attorney has indicated that they have they will they are making that decision and they will announce that decision when charges are formally announced which next coming weeks you think 
weeks. It could be weeks. It could be months. I just don't know. So what are these families, the, uh, Preston Lord's family, uh, people in the community? It just seems unfair at this point. You want answers. And you deserve answers. They do. And what we're experiencing as a community is what the victims of homicide, the families of homicide victims experience in isolation every time there's a murder. This is the process that they go through. And what we're being, we're, we're kind of being allowed to peek behind the curtain through this case because it has, it has generated so much attention. And we are being allowed to see the very private moments of a family as they wait and wait and wait for the justice system, the wheels of the justice system to turn. And they turn slow. There, it is very hard to explain that the how these attacks were allowed to go unchecked by police for for more than a year and that that has led us to the place where preston lord was murdered now i don't have to say it the father of one of those beating videos richard kenner has told elena and i that he is consumed with the idea that if police had acted sooner in his case that Preston Lord would never have been murdered, that he'd be alive today. Now, of course, none of us know if that's true, but it, it's eating this guy up alive. And by the way, his son was attacked. Gilbert police have arrested people in his case, um, but he sent his son overseas to live because his son was so, so afraid of what would happen to him. You see what's going on. It just seems warped. It doesn't seem like something like that, something so horrible because these attacks are horrific that that could happen in the community that we love i think what it shows us and i hate to be a cynic but I know. but it shows that it can happen anywhere there is a group of kids who have found a community of violence amongst themselves and they have acted on whatever impulses are driving them I go on social media, I find the videos, I find the pictures, I talk to people. Uh, they provide me stories and, and accounts of what they went through. Among the things that some of these folks have turned over to us are pictures and videos of guns. And I'm not talking about just a handgun here or there. I'm talking about some major league firepower. There are videos of these kids street racing in very high performance automobiles very expensive automobiles there and doing donuts in industrial parks. And there are accounts of them terrorizing neighborhoods in their cars, um, particularly when they're targeting somebody who they believe has wronged them. There's this campaign of harassment we've heard about. I have videos and pictures of drugs, which include, by the way, pill presses and molly water. Um, that has been provided me as well. This isn't just a group of school kids going around bullying other school kids. It's something much more violent than that. What these kids are capable of, do you think it's gone on this long because of fear? I, I don't have to think it. Families who have, whose sons and daughters, sons mostly have been attacked have told me they're terrified of this group. And there is evidence, there there is anecdotal evidence and, and accounts of these goons coming back to harass victims in previous attacks. Um, and in fact, we know from the Mesa police arrest, the one individual I talked about, the juvenile who I've linked to two other videos who had the gun in the, in the snapshot, they have said that he actually threatened the victim in the case since, since it occurred. So there, there is a sense of retaliation. There is a sense of fear. And I can tell you the parents of these kids are deathly afraid. And they, they shared their stories at what they believed was peril to, their, to themselves, to their houses, to their families. So, so they have come forward because they want something to change. And, and I can tell you that other parents have told me and provided evidence to me that they have gone to the Gilbert police and tried to complain about this group repeatedly, only to be brushed off and brushed aside. And that includes since this all began for me roughly a month and a half ago. Rushed off and brushed aside. That doesn't 
I don't understand how that's possible. Just the evidence that you have alone. How can a police department brush off or brush aside these videos, these victims? How? I don't know. I can tell you that I have mothers who um, are connected, whose family members are connected to the goons, who they have gone to, they have gone to the police and said, I have information for you. And they say they've been turned away. The mothers who started all this, who who began collecting this information and and starting and started to put together cases, have taken that information to Gilbert Police. They have they believe they have built entire cases. In fact, one mother has told me I should have a badge. I've done all their work for them, and it's for nothing because they're not acting on it. Again. There could be a million things happening behind the scenes. Um, I, I believe that, like most people, police are good. They do an, an, a very hard job. Um, but like other jobs, there there are some who won't perform. There, are, you know, there's good and bad in every every job, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, but I can't tell you what's happening behind the scenes. I believe that decent cops want to make a difference, and they're trying to investigate these cases. I don't know where where it all falls apart but clearly the community members believe that it has clearly because that's i feel like that's the frustration and the the fact well not the fact but just the thought the thought that maybe if we took one or two of these cases seriously over the last year that a life could be saved and that's just something so hard to come to grips with it is and and it's horrifying. We've got the Preston Lord case, which right now, if we're we're waiting for arrests in that, could be weeks, could be months. It's in the hands of the Maricopa County Attorney's Office. Yep. But we also have the Mesa Police Department, the Gilbert Police Department. We've got Pinal County, who are dealing with the Gilbert goons as a whole. Right. Going through all of these different videos from an entire year trying to make other arrests, arrests that could also be made in the Preston Lord case as well. Yeah, individuals involved in those attacks could be in fact be involved in Preston Lord's murder. One of the things we found early on was that um, a known member of the Gilbert Goons, a juvenile, just days after Preston Lord's murder, posted on social media an account that could be read by any anyway it, as a confession he he wrote on snapchat that i hit a guy he fell down others stomped him i heard later that he died idk which of course is tech speak for i don't know that same individual i interviewed the mother of uh, his his former girlfriend she was in the car at the party where preston lord was killed she said that same individual on the night preston lord died she was with the car as the as the fight occurred out of her eyesight around the corner but her boyfriend the same individual got in the car and said i just knocked a dude out and then they drove off and and so you have this this goon who um i've connected to other other attacks, making what appears to be a confession, not just on social media, but if if his um if his account, if the account of the girlfriend is to be believed to her as well, at least if nothing else about his involvement in in attacking Preston. Lord. And this is just up on social media. I got to tell you, I've done some stupid things in my life. I really don't ever post them on social media um, unless I'm trying to make my son laugh. I, I mean, you, I can't imagine. I just, they are posting pictures and proof and evidence of crimes involved, you know, that they're implicating themselves in, in crimes on social media. And they've been doing it for a year, at least. Right. Yeah, this stuff didn't just start appearing magically. They were sitting on social media on their accounts until people started finding it. And then they were they were removed. They're they're being removed. And of course, there's archiving and there's ways to get it. And and um, 
we're pretty good at it. Um, there are others who are better who are finding it and then providing it to us. Um, there is a core, there is a group in the community that wants to make this right. The, a group of parents, activists, students who are determined to shine light on this. And we are determined to keep following it. Yeah. I don't know if that's an answer to the community, but I do want them to know that we're out here and trying to do that work for the community. FBI is still taking tips from the public. So if you know something, maybe you come across a video or a photo on your teen phone, whatever it is, you can still submit those. We've got a link on our website, 12news.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Emma Jade. I'll see you next time on MomCast. Thank you.